How's it going guys? Cody guys, back again, dropping yet another video. Right guys, as you can tell from the title of the video, uh, the subsequent headline and stuff, and uh, the story guys, if you're interested in reading this story, um, it's in the description below. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste it there so you can have a nosy at your own leisure. So, the story is about the crisis within the prison system guys, right? Um, Lord Wolf, who was the um, Lord Chief Justice, uh, who actually oversaw the investigation into the Strangeways riot back in 1990, is actually standing up and talking and speaking and uh, being quoted and stuff, referenced the state of prisons and stuff. This is a guy that um, actually, like the prison system changed on the back of the riot. Uh, the prisoners involved, Alan Lord, Paul Taylor and all them guys, John Murray and everyone, they got 10 years added to their sentence. Still to this day, Britain's longest ever prison riot. Uh, and it changed the system for the better. It brought um, sanitation to the prison system. Uh, not much else, really, because we're going backwards, guys, when it comes to the prisons of today. Right, we've got sanitation, but have you really when it's broken? So this is this is like, um, obviously, I speak out for prison uh, prisoners, guys, and prison issues and stuff like that. Um, just done an interview very, very uh, not long ago at all. Right, guys, so... It says here, an, uh, an observer investigation found that two-thirds of prisons, two-thirds, guys, right, are providing inmates with inadequate conditions or unacceptable treatment, right? Two-thirds, guys, right? That is a lot. Uh, an analysis of hundreds of inspections covering 118 institutions found on a staggering 68% are now providing unsatisfactory standards in at least one respect, with two in five jails deemed to be unacceptably safe, guys, right? Now, like I say, obviously, how we is living in squalid, run-down conditions with harsh regimes because of understaffing and stuff, how does that aid rehabilitation, right, from a former prisoner like myself, uh, perspective? Simple. It doesn't, does it? It dehumanizes you, desensitizes you, demoralizes you, and makes you even more disenfranchised and stuff. Brutalizing prisoners, guys, isn't going to reduce reoffending and stuff. Reoffending costs about the taxpayer about fifty million pounds a year um, at the moment and stuff. And with fewer police on the streets, guys, right? Prisons should be a place of education, skills, and training. Um, but the Ministry of Justice don't listen to people like me. Um, but yeah, I've got real life experience of the prison system, just like thousands of others. Prisoners, prisoners' families, um, we've, there's a lot to be said really, isn't there? Uh, new Prisons Minister Rory Stewart describes some jails as deeply disturbing. He concedes that prisons are rife with drugs and psychoactive drugs and sees, an inc sees increasing levels of violence by prisoners and horrifying rates of self-harm. Increasing levels of violence. Now let me just stop you there. Increasing levels of violence. Um, record number of self-harm and assaults guys year on year right fucking seeing an increase in levels mate they're, they're, they're off the scale they're getting higher every year they're going off the scale more and more and more the only way you can reduce violent incidents within prisons are in um improve conditions for prisoners um get them out of the cells more for more than a few hours a day send them for skills training and education and also decrease prison numbers Treat these people like prisoners. You want them to be productive members of society when they leave prison, but you don't do anything with them while they're in prison. Uh, we're just a drain on the society and the fact that we're very expensive. Uh, £40,000 a year on average to house a prisoner in prison. Um, and then you leave. And then ha over half um, of prisoners that are released, guys, are back in prison within 12 months. It's a revolving door, as we've alluded to. Not just for prisoners, guys, as well. Also for prison officers. Staff retention is a huge problem. The the prison officers, guys, right? When I first went to prison, I thought it was us versus them mentality. Uh, the reality is, um, I felt, I when I worked alongside prison officers when I was a cleaner, um, I felt a great com deal of compassion for them. They felt a great deal of compassion for us. And in any other walk of life, these are people I would go for drinks with and stuff and be friends with. Um, so, yeah, so Lord Chief, uh, Lord Wolf, sorry, the former Lord Chief Justice who oversaw the inquiry into the Strangeways riots back in 1990, which, again, as I've alluded to, to, to still to this day, guys, is Britain's longest prison riot. Um, the, the two people died, a prison officer died of a heart attack. And a vulnerable prisoner, for those who don't know, VP, vulnerable prisoner, is a rapist, sex offender. He was thrown off the roof of A-Wing. 
um, and he died on the steps. Um, and like I say, it brought sanitation was implemented in the prison and stuff, but there was a lot of racism within the prison system at that time. Uh, conditions are not much better than they are. Well, for me, conditions are as bad now as they were then, apart from we've got sanitation. Um, so he said here that there was a very real risk of such an outbreak happening again. What he's referring to there is saying that there could be another strange, there could be another riot within the prison system that's similar to the Strange Ways riot guys back in 1990. Now, as a former prisoner that's been in Strange Ways, I would have to concur with that and say, yeah, it's a very, very real possibility. The smoking ban um, that was brought in and stuff, right? Tobacco has been used as um, a stress relief in prison and currency for forever and a day. And like I say, it's going to long sustained periods of bang up. You've got mental health. You've got the smoking ban now. It's like they're, they're trying to provoke prisoners into acting. Now, the Ministry of Justice are looking at these figures and stuff. They're looking at the shocking um, state of prisons and stuff. Do they anything about it? Absolutely not. Did they speak about it on Prime Minister's Question Time? Absolutely not. Um, when there's a strange, when there's a riot in the prison system, which I do believe will happen eventually, I think that that's what's needed. I'm not asking people to riot, but if that, I think it will take that uh, for, for for the prison system to be overhauled. Um, but like I say, is it going to happen? We don't know. In my opinion, it'll happen sooner rather than later, guys. The, the prisoners have had enough. Uh, and there was a very famous saying by an MP when it came to the Strangeries riots. If we treat people like animals, we shouldn't be surprised if they act like animals, right? And like I say, prisoners are exactly that, guys. That's exactly the way it's going. So he said here, Lord Will said, if you ask me whether we have gone backwards to where we were pre-Strangeways, remember, this is 28 years ago. I think we are in that sort of territory, right? This is from the Lord Chief, the former Lord Chief Justice, Lord Wolf, right? Um... I, I personally believe I, I've got nothing but respect for Lord Wolf. Uh, he's obviously a man that knows what he's talking about. I agree with him wholeheartedly. And like I say, apart from sanitation, guys, in every other, the fact that sanitation was implemented and put into prisons on the back of the strange ways, right? Nothing else has changed, guys. We're actually going back, uh, which is crazy, guys. Brutalizing prisoners is gonna is is not gonna reduce reoffending. Nor is it going to give them a sense of entitlement or a right of belonging or feel like they're a productive member of society. Being treated like that will only lead one way. And in prison, you make criminal connections. There's fewer police on the streets. Prison has to be the last line of defence, guys. But what do I know? Um, he also went on to say, it is not confined to one of our prisons. It's across the board. There has been a complete breakdown in recognising the facts that serious action is needed. And recognising is the only way to do it. Uh, the only way to do it is to have a long-term plan with somebody in charge of it throughout the term. Because obviously what he's making reference to there is the justice secretaries and the uh, prison and probation ministers. They passed the title on. I think there's been, I think there's been eight in the last six years or s something like that. The, observa the Observer investigation found that in the most inspections of adult prisons in England and Wales, check this guy, right? Just get your head around this, all right? 80 out of 118 jails inspected were providing insufficient or poor standards in at least one area, at least one, or poor standards in at least, yeah, sorry, only 7% of prisons, that's just eight of them, received a good rating across all four categories, right? An alarming 44% were providing poor or uns uh, insufficient safety, right, to prisoners, right? Almost half, 47%, offered insufficient or poor access to meaningful activities. Talking about gym, uh, work like um, gym, library, things like that. Um, often leaving prisoners locked in their cells for long periods of time. If you, leaving prisoners locked in the, the cells for a long period of time, guys. Uh, strange ways I spent 22, 23 hours a day locked up, right? Um, in my opinion, has a... Dig, um, has a detrimental effect on your mental health. With social people, with social creatures, um, being thrown in your cell and left to rot in squalid conditions where you're sharing your cell with vermin, cockroaches, things like that, guys, right? Um, and if you haven't already got mental health problems, I believe it starts them. Uh, two in, yeah, so it says here, 
Two in five prisons were providing inadequate assistance to prisoners as they left prison. A major problem in tackling reoffending. Again, I'm sick of going over it. As a former criminal and as a former prisoner, right, with fewer police on the streets, frontline policing closing down, community police stations closing down, places are going unpleased, guys. The youths and criminals are running feral, right? Um, and like I say, so these people leaving prison, being brutalized and stuff, they're not getting assistance while they're in prison. There's not enough courses, things like that. There's no, there's no consistency within the prison system. Um, and then, like I say, they're just kicking them out of the door with forty-six pounds, not asking if they've got anywhere to go. No resettlement, no reintegration. They go back to crime, guys. They reoffend. Cost the taxpayer fifteen billion pounds a year. Again, should the Ministry of Justice listen to people like me and people that I uh, speak to? Absolutely, in my opinion, I could save the taxpayer money. I could save prisoners' lives. I could decrease prison numbers. I would improve um, the prison system for the better for all involved, including the prison officers. Um, I would reduce. I, I could reduce violent incidents within prison. I could reduce self harm within prisons, and I could reduce self uh, suicides within prisons. But again, what do I know? They'd rather go, the, these MPs, guys, that are born into bubbles, that live in middle class families, that are born into rich families, that that never experience crime. They read about it in in a posh newspaper, right? They they can't relate to prisoners. They they don't know what it's like to struggle. They don't they've not been sexually abused. They've not suffered immeasurably. They've not grown up in care. They've not grown up with the parents being addicts and stuff or uh, riddled with addiction, right? They, they've they've been silver spoon in the mouth, right? And they're residing guys over people like you and me. And they can't relate to us guys. Their attitude is lock them up and throw away the key. Uh, there's a lot of people in prison like me that are very switched on, that want to better themselves, guys, but are not given the opportunity. Um, they're kicked out with £46, and as I've alluded to, within 12 months, more than half prisoners, I think it's about 60%, end up back in prison, guys. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs, but it's a revolving door that is prison. Um, as many prisons were deteriorating as were improving, with conditions worsening by 41% since the last inspection. So... Since the last, so so you got one inspection and then you've got the latest, and in that time, forty one percent of the conditions have been worsened, right? And yet the Ministry of Justice do nothing. The worst performing prisons, such as Bristol, H uh, and P Bristol, you've got Guy's Marsh, you've got uh, Liverpool H and P Liverpool Walton Jail, you've got Nottingham Prison, and you've got Wormwood Scrub Scrubs are, are also overcrowded. Uh, then prisons are also overcrowded. Many other prisons are overcrowded as well. And I, I, just a few weeks ago, um, in Wormwood Scrubs, a prisoner was actually stabbed to death. Prisons should be places where you feel safe and stuff, but um, you, prisons are very lawless places. Uh, and as I've gone over here, half of prisoners reoffend within a year, and reoffending costs the taxpayer £15 billion pounds a year. <clears throat> so, like I say, guys, right, I... I, I Everything that's said in that story is that things that I've been echoing on Twitter anyway. I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter and stuff. But this is the thing. I talk sense. Other people that have been in... I don't, I'm not an expert, guys. I'm not an expert about nothing. I'm an expert in my own life and my own experiences. And that's all I can talk through. Um, there's, a lot go, there's a lot to be said, guys. For what's been said there, right? You, you, the, Lord, the former Lord Chief Justice, Lord Wolf, is even speaking up and saying, you know what? The, the, the way that you're treating prisoners and stuff... It's gone back to the era before the Strange Ways riot, and the only thing that the only thing that's happened in that time is sanitation was installed within the prisons, right? Because they were slopping out, guys. For those that don't know, there was pissing and shit in a bucket, three in a cell, two or two or three in a cell, and he was having to slop out, right? Sanitation was installed within the prison, and TVs came in in 1998, 1999. Prisons were installed, were given to prisoners. Um, most of them, there's not enough to go around. They're broken. Prisoners smash them up. But th that's the only thing that's changed. The conditions, guys, are actually going. Have gone back to it. Less courses. Less less time out of your cell. Record numbers of assaults. Record numbers of self harm. Squalid conditions that are reminiscent of Dickensian in England. Um, but we're prisoners, aren't we? No one gives a shit about us. But then they're all up in arms when p these people that want to brutalise prisoners then shouldn't complain when they are victims of crime. Because if that if that person's been in prison, and these these Joe Public these do gooders and naysayers that want to brutalise prisoners and stuff, you shouldn't be surprised if you end up being stolen from or mugged or jumped or whatever by someone that's been through the prison system. After all, you guys want to brutalise them, 
wrong attitude to have, guys. Prisons, prisoners should be given a sense of self-worth. Um, they should be, um, like I say, all prison succeeds is demoralize you, desensitize you, dehumanize you, demoralize you. I've already said that. Uh, and make you more disenfranchised than when you entered. And surely the aim of leaving prison, guys, is to leave in a better position than when you entered the prison system. So that you don't resort back to crime. That you seek another way. That you gain employment with the skills and training and education you get in prison. Well, that's not happening, is it, guys? And like I say, reoffending at £15 billion a year. Prison should be a place of education, skills and training, resettlement and then reintegration. But again, what do I know? I'm only a former prisoner, aren't I? Right, guys, I'm going to leave it here because my tea's behind me. I need to get it in the oven. So have a lovely evening, guys. Whatever you're doing, leave your comments in the comment section below. The story, the, the link for the story is in the description below. I'm going to speak to you all soon, guys. Take care. Bye.